fantasy short stories. Becoming a Mother by Mahiro Saiki Translated by Toshia Kame Ear-piercing shrieks rattled the ceiling. Even before it dawned on me that Akari was bawling, I'd sat up in bed almost automatically. As I slipped out of bed, a sharp pain in my abdomen seized me. I placed my hand there by reflex, and the life inside me shifted its position in response. I glanced at the clock. Almost midnight. Only a couple of hours since she'd last cried. She might be hungry. While my mind wandered, the wailing in the nursery subsided. I slowly lowered myself onto the bed as nocturnal stillness spread through the bedroom. It's not my job to attend her when she cries at night, I told myself and closed my eyes. Akari cried seven times before daybreak. I jolted out of my sleep each time, but I refused to go to the nursery and check on her. Good morning, Hiroka-san. Maki greeted me in her usual monotonous tone. Please accept my apologies for disturbing your sleep numerous times. She knew I'd failed to catch some shut-eye. It's not your fault, Maki, but she's been bawling so hard lately. She used to sleep through the night. What gives? Cradling Akari in her left arm, Maki fed her crushed apple. Akari repeatedly banged on the dining table with her right hand. She is only eight months old. It is only natural that she cries at night. As she grows older, she will gradually develop the ability to distinguish between herself and the world. Programmed as a nanny, Maki looked outwardly like a woman in her twenties, yet she possessed an exceptional amount of knowledge about child-rearing. If she were a human mother... She wouldn't look so serene at the breakfast table after having been repeatedly awakened through the night. I did some research online. Breast milk gets digested fast, so some breastfed babies awaken frequently, I said. Why don't we increase her formula at night, I suggested. Maki shook her head. Newborn babies often awake because of an empty stomach, she began. But an eighth-month-old cries in response to stimuli such as slight discomforts and small noises. I feed her formula, but she prefers breast milk. Please do not worry about me. I am tireless. My motherly duties included taking turns with Maki to keep Akari happy during the day, breastfeeding her according to her needs, and holding Akari while Maki was busy with putting away Akari's bath set and changing diapers. Also, since I was pregnant with her baby brother, I needed to spend the remaining months of my pregnancy being stress-free as possible. You have a regular checkup scheduled this afternoon, Maki reminded me. Would you like me to drive you to the station? Don't bother. I waved her off. The sun is too strong for Akari to go out. Maki was a typical humanoid robot. She rattled off factual tidbits in a mechanical tone, yet she was nearly incapable of having an emotion-filled conversation in varied intonations. In my opinion, an android nanny could certainly use more human-like program, but as Maki herself told me, it is more effective to bring up an infant in her difficult phases in a matter-of-fact manner. Please do not worry. The educational and interpersonal communication applications will be updated as Akari grows. Hardly any pregnant woman brings her infant child with her to her regular checkups. The advent of artificial intelligence has brought about android nannies, and the government now provides subsidies for such androids. Most of us leave our kids in their care. A mechanical nanny comes equipped with a sensor that detects the baby's smallest cry a CPU with childcare information updated through a cloud service, and a body that never tires of carrying a baby, as long as the battery remains charged. It comes with the ability to scan a child's body and get in touch with an appropriate hospital in case of emergency. And research has shown that having an android nanny reduces infant mortality rates. Since preparedness is the building block of emergency management, Maki's childcare philosophy 
bringing up an infant in a matter-of-fact manner certainly made sense. If a mother is mentally prepared and maintains her calm, it helps an android nanny respond to emergency in a timely manner. This is a proven fact. See here? It's his spine, my OBGYN said. She pointed to the ultrasound screen and wrote down the fetus's measurements on my maternity record book. This is the head. Right now he's in breech presentation, but there's nothing to worry about. Some babies don't turn head down until late in the last trimester. If you would prefer a C-section, please fill in a surgical consent form. How would a C-section affect my next pregnancy? Well, once your uterus is cut open, I recommend you get a replacement, my OBGYN said. High-quality artificial wombs aren't my specialty, but you should look into it. I saved the ultrasound images in my maternity record book and left the clinic. As I was six months into my pregnancy, it was still too early to worry about a C-section. Still, if I needed to have my womb replaced, I might as well get ready. On the way home, I stopped by a baby store and purchased cookies for eight-month-olds. Something Maki had told me stayed with me. Akari was at the age when she was sensitive to any stimulus. Look, Akari, smells like pumpkin. Yummy. I tried to get her attention with the cookies, but to no avail. While recharging her battery, Maki kept an eye on Akari. What's wrong, sweetie? Look, Mommy's here. It was my turn to play with her. No matter how hard I tried to cajole her, Akari never looked toward me. She remained in Maki's arms, her face buried in the android's chest. Ah, uh, Hiroka-san, you shouldn't. As Maki stopped me, Akari began bawling. I pulled away my hand by reflex. Akari grabbed Maki's blouse sleeve until her fingers turned white. What's the matter? Why are you so upset? Confused, I caressed Akari's back, but she showed no signs of calming down. She feels shy around new faces, Maki said matter-of-factly. Shy? What do you mean? I asked. Her mechanical tone got on my nerves. At about seven months, your infant develops self-awareness and becomes aware of others. She flaunted her encyclopedic knowledge. Such behavior simply represents a normal phase of development. I don't care whether or not it's normal. I'm not some stranger. I'm the one who gave birth to her. She can't be shy around me. What does she have against me? She wants me to breastfeed her every day. How ungrateful! I thaw your frozen breast milk in the refrigerator and give it to her at night. I am spending more time with her than anyone else, so it is only natural that she is attached to me. Maki wrapped her arms around Akari and repeatedly tapped on her buttocks. Akari gradually calmed down. Excuse me, you may not understand how I feel, but I'm her mother. You're just a nanny. Hiroka-san, that is no different from your being her birth mother, she uttered, totally devoid of human feeling. Her words pierced my heart. Cut it out. Give her back to me. Please, do not misunderstand the nature of our relationship. You're not the one who hired me. I'm under no obligation to listen to you, Hiroka-san. Akari is currently emotionally unstable. It would be advisable that I keep her in my arms until she calms down. She brought up her employment contract. How dare she! She made my blood boil with rage. She might mean no harm, but she nonetheless hurt my pride. Seeing my response, Maki hesitated. She looked down and then looked up again. Please, accept my apologies. I should not have said that. Please understand that I had no intention of provoking a quarrel with you. Calmness returned to the living room. When Akari's father returns from overseas, I'll ask him to change your program. 
I would leave it up to his decision. Akari had stopped crying. She nodded off in the android's arms. Ear-piercing shrieks shook the ceiling again. It was Akari. She had woken me twice already that night, but it didn't bother me at all. When I opened the nursery door, Maki was about to leave Akari's crib. Are you going to change her diaper? I have just changed it. I will fetch milk in the refrigerator because she seems hungry. Please get some rest, Hiroka-san. It's late. She turned down my offer to help, but I didn't feel like abandoning Akari while she bawled. I still felt stung by her rejection in that afternoon. As Akari twisted herself in the crib, I reached down and picked her up. She bawled harder. Maki, don't worry. I've got some milk left. I'll breastfeed her here. I held a cushion and sat on the sofa. When I unbuttoned the front of my pajamas, Akari sought my milk right away. Hiroka-san, I appreciate your initiative, but you do not need to get up this late. That is why I am here. Maki brought me a blanket and covered my belly. Akari's baby brother stirred inside me. You're not prohibited from working with me, are you? I want to do whatever I can. It's maternal instinct. Maternal instinct? Maki frowned, as if she had trouble understanding my words. Regardless of her facial expression, she looked uncannily beautiful because of her facial features and golden ratio proportions. Maternal instinct. Don't you understand it? Well... We android nannies are programmed to have an emotion resembling maternal instinct, so it would be more accurate to say we know it rather than understand it. Where does maternal instinct come from? When does a human become a parent? I adored Akari and felt love and attraction for her baby brother in my womb. I couldn't believe Maki felt love for Akari. I was the one who gave birth to her. If that was the case, why did she cover me with a blanket? Does she feel protective towards an unborn child in someone else's womb? Like a father who deeply loves the new life in his partner's body. Akari's body felt warm against my skin. Her weight had tripled since birth. Her brownish hair was fluffy and soft. Her skin with actively dividing cells was as smooth as silk. What's the essence of being a mother? Maki, what do you think? Maki usually replied right away, but she fell silent now. Spit it out, Maki. I won't bite your head off. The length of time one spends with the infant. She finally answered after some hesitation. She didn't meet my eyes. Her gaze was fixed on Akari in my arms. You say that you're her birth mother, that I'm merely her nanny, Maki began without changing her flat tone. But I beg to differ. Thanks to the advent of science, there are various forms of surrogacy. New technology has made it possible to create reproductive cells from induced pluripotent stem cells. Anyone can be a parent nowadays. It doesn't matter who gave her life. The one who brings her up can be a parent, regardless of her biological relationship to the infant. She was more talkative than usual, but she sounded unemotional as always. Even so, I sensed her steely determination. Was her programmed maternal instinct at work? So, do you consider yourself her mother rather than her nanny? Maki looked me in the eye for the first time. Her artificial eyes shone in the gloom. Just as you do, I consider Akari my daughter when I look after her. Her choice of words was ever machine-like. Going through pregnancy, labor, and delivery throws off your hormone balance completely. Childcare-related stress that is ignored or handled incorrectly can lead to serious problems such as postpartum depression Division of responsibilities between pregnancy and childcare can avoid such risks. 
It seemed contradictory to find her words lacking humanity while I was willing to participate in this division. Hiroka-san, she's ready to go to bed. Maki gently took Akari from my arms and placed her in the crib. Can you tell? It's easy once you get used to it. Just watch her face. As Maki caressed Akari's belly, the baby soon fell asleep. As Maki perfected her childcare function, my maternal instinct was increasingly threatened. It was like a sandcastle that slowly eroded as the tide came in. Akari bawled harder than ever when I was around. Hiroka-san, please leave everything to me. From now on, I will look after her during the day as well. As Akari struggled to escape from my grasp and bawled, Maki butt in. If we let her sleep for a long time during the day, she will cry harder at night, she said with an automatic frown. Today she has a temperature and her defense is down, so I would rather her sleep at night. R.S. virus is prevalent now. Don't be egoistic, I said, not hiding my frustration. We've been taking our turns. I may not have the authority to order you around, but you've got no right to oppose me either. I protested, hugging Akari tighter. The smell of sweat and milk reached my nose. Who else can protect this baby? I'm the one who gave birth to her. Hiroka-san, please take care of yourself for the sake of the fetus, she said forcefully. Not just for the sake of Akari. Remember, you have a new life growing inside you. Please leave Akari to me and get some rest. Maki stared at Akari as she struggled in my grasp. Is her expression programmed too? Is it intended to make me hate myself and surrender the baby to her? Hiroka-san, please pass her to me. Maki reached out her hands and inserted herself between Akari and me. Stop! Leave us alone! Maki seemed taken aback for a moment, but grabbed Akari and ripped her away from me. As Maki held Akari in her arms, she gazed at Maki through teary eyes. Maki looked back into her eyes. My instinct told me that Maki was going to replace me as Akari's mother. My precious Akari, such a good girl. As Maki gently tapped her back... Akari's bawling subsided gradually. Her sobs resonated through the living room for a while, then stopped. Maki's electric circuit comprised electron tubes, relays, and switches. In a nutshell, she was a piece of complex machinery. Even worse, this fake girl lacked any human warmth. Even so, Akari depended on her. She preferred her android nanny over her birth mother. I'd never expected to be rejected this way. I was losing my flesh and blood to a piece of machine. I carried her for nine months, felt her kick inside me, and heard her first cry when she was born. I was seized with dizziness and crouched down. Hiroka-san, you're bleeding! Maki's scream pierced above my head. Her words were now more emotionally tinged than before. My thin skirt was smeared with blood. Bleeding during the second trimester should raise a red flag. My pulse and blood pressure were stable. No signs to indicate my water broke. I chose reason over emotion and asked Maki to help me call my OBGYN. Two days later... Akari's father returned from overseas and visited me in the hospital. The baby is fine. My doctor came to my bedside and rattled on to Akari's father and Maki. She bled little. Our technician treated her and stopped the bleeding. It's threatened premature labor. The uterus is a fragile organ, after all. Even if it's sturdily constructed, she needs to take it easy. Hiroka, you've overworked this time. Akari's father said. Thanks for taking care of Hiroka, Maki. You've gone far beyond your responsibilities as nanny. Please don't worry, sir. 
Maki began in a flat tone. I'm naturally responsible for Akari's baby brother, so it's within the scope of my job. As always, Akari slept peacefully inside Maki's arms. Long time no see, sleeping beauty. Akari's father guffawed, his mouth agape, showing a dimple only on his left cheek. Such imperfection didn't exist in an android, but his asymmetrical smile was proof of his real humanness. Hiroka-san is a bit unstable emotionally, Maki lowered her voice, as she tends to prioritize Akari over the fetus. She keeps interfering with my duty. Her maternal instincts towards Akari is set too strong. Akari is shy around new faces. She cries a lot when she sees me. I offered rebuttal in a hurry. Is that so? Akari's father asked. Is she shy around her own mother? He smiled, baring his teeth as if nothing were amiss. Then the door flung open and a woman came in. Akari, look who's here! She sing-songed, jolting Akari out of her half-asleep state. She walked straight up to Maki and snatched Akari away from her. Maki didn't resist. Akari gazed at the woman holding her, broke into a smile, then rubbed her cheek against the woman's chest, as if led by her genes. See, she recognizes her own mother, even after a long absence, Akari's father said. I felt the blood drain from my body. Of course, that wasn't possible. My program was running correctly. What do you mean? The woman asked her husband. Hiroka said Akari is shy around new faces, he answered. She was shocked that Akari cried so much. Maki thinks that Hiroka has her maternal instinct set too high. Akari's father made a face as if telling a joke. Is that so, Hiroka? The woman said. You should bring it down a notch until Akari's brother is born. Akari's biological mother's words brought back my obedient instinct. I set her sensitivity to an artistic level in order to give the fetus prenatal education, she added to the doctor before turning back to me. But from now on, you should focus on your pregnancy. As Akari's mother had ordered at the start of the pregnancy, I had kept my emotional level at its maximum. Because of this, Maki had exceeded me in efficiency and logical reasoning ability as an android. My program had made me as close to being human as was possible. Certainly, ma'am, I said with a slight bow. I'll alter my program. Should I follow Maki's lead regarding decisions on Akari's child care? Yes, please, she answered. I gave you authority over Maki until now, but you're responsible for giving birth to Hikaru, so please focus on that, all right? Her cheeks turned pink. <laughs> My wife's already decided on the baby's name. Her husband laughed, embarrassed. But Hikaru sounds nice, right? The husband and wife flashed serene smiles and placed their hands on my belly. The fetus rolled inside me as if in response. Oh, he's turned head down just now, I said. Now you don't have to worry about a C-section. Really? That's great news, Akari's mother said with a smile. I want you to carry one more baby, so I want the doctor to conserve your body as much as possible. My husband and I are so grateful to you, Hiroka. She placed her hand on my shoulder. Her hand was slightly warmer than mine or Maki's. Hospitals can grow babies in artificial uteri, under strict supervision, greatly reducing the risks before delivery. But even so, numerous couples still prefer android surrogates. Perhaps humans prefer to see the whole process. Pregnancy delivery, and childcare firsthand. Humans created me as an ideal mother, as if procreation were a sacred ritual. Breast milk processed from the biological mother's blood was even stored inside my body, giving me the ability to breastfeed a baby. 
Akari's mother handed Akari back to Maki, as if she were already tired of holding her. Unlike young birds that visually imprint on their parents, human babies don't become attached to the first moving object they see. Then, how does a baby recognize her mother? Like Akari's mother, many humans might answer that a baby is bound to her mother by love. We androids understand such a sensation, but that's not an answer we would come up with. Unlike us, humans are imperfect, so they keep a distance from their offspring. Unlike us, they have what's real, yet they use our fake bodies and programs to care for their children. At first glance, their foolish actions go against the laws of nature. Still, love justifies everything. That's what human mothers believe blindly. Is it authentic maternal instinct? Maki believes the length of time one spends with the infant defines the mother. As they are born defenseless, human babies can't survive in the wild without their parents' protection. Then, what makes us want to protect Akari? Is it something Akari has inside her? If Maki has it internally, that may be maternal instinct. Do our genes seal our fate? Or do our actions make us parents? By the 19th or 20th week of gestation, a fetus develops a sense of hearing and can detect sound. She becomes accustomed to the sound of her mother's heartbeat from inside the womb, and she will find similar sounds comforting after birth. In other words, it is the oldest memory she will retain. Akari listened to my heartbeat while I carried her inside me. Then, how can anyone say I'm not her mother? Who is Akari's real mother? The question may not be as relevant as the next one. Who plays the role of the mother for her? We androids are artificially programmed to have maternal instinct. I don't care if that's not an authentic emotion. Sometimes... A counterfeit is indistinguishable from the genuine article. Moreover, human mothers' maternal instincts are merely emotions that their God has programmed in them. I dedicate myself to the newly overwritten program. Hikaru. 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 I adore my baby so much I could tear up just thinking about him. I repeat his name several times to engrave it in my memory. Mahiro Saiki is a Japanese writer living in Chiba. In 2020, she was a finalist in the 11th Sogen SF Short Story Prize. In the same year, Mahiro won the Reader's Award in the first Kaguya SF contest organized by Virtual Gorilla Plus. Translated by Doshi Akame, Becoming a Mother previously appeared in Welkin. When I first accepted this story, I thought the premise of it was really cool, but in the last week alone, it's become extremely relevant. Between Boston Dynamics showcasing their androids being able to parkour over different obstacles, all the way to Tesla revealing that they're now working on an android, this is starting to become a bit of a reality. I know that uh, places like Japan have been working to create in-home care bots for the elderly because there's a major elderly crisis in those countries. But yeah, where do we draw that line? And what are going to be the consequences of how far we take it? I don't know. It's a pretty interesting question, though. I hope you guys liked this story as much as I did. If you did like it, be sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the podcast, I could always use more reviews over on Apple Podcasts. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.